What's going on everybody? Getting it up here with another Mega Man X Type character overview. Today we're going to be taking a look at Dive Armor Zero as he has the next character to release in the global version of X Dive. Alright, so Dive Armor Zero is definitely a uh, a powerful unit. And uh, one a lot of people are going to be interested in and a lot of people are going to be not interested in for a variety of reasons. But let's get into his skills first. So first up, uh, God, uh, Ryogu Shogu. I probably butchered that, but uh, launches a dash forward towards the target, dealing 252% attack damage after hitting the target, calls the target to slow down and become disabled. Um, that's just slow, I'm pretty sure. They used the, the phrase disabled before, and my thought is that it means immobilized because, um, yeah, but I'm pretty sure it just means slow. I don't think it has uh, immobilized. That's what, and it'll deal continuous damage to targets that hits in range of back one. You not take any damage, uh, you not take any damage and negative status during use. So this skill is already starting off very, very strong. It is a dash, it deals a fat amount of damage, and it has true showtime on it. Just because it also has dot damage and status effects attached to it as well. Very, very potent. So, for the modifier chips, we have power increase, which is damage by 5%, which... I don't I don't know why they always add this. Uh, mobility reduces prep time by 20%, which is pretty good. But, the one that you're going to be using all the time, no matter what game mode you're playing, is Restriction Off. Uh, Restriction can be used again after the launch of Bakuin. Let me trigger once more after a 7 second cooldown. Basically, this is what allows you to use a skill continuously. Uh, once every seven seconds, you can launch a skill twice. And that is very, very strong. Now, the the slow effect is apparently 300% uh, based on the wiki. I don't I, I don't know what that's... What does that mean? Uh, is that how potent the slow... I don't think the slow is that potent. But the, the damage of Bakuin, which I had to go look up uh, as well is about 188% attack damage as a modifier. So that's very, very nice there. And uh, the, the, obviously this, this is a, this is gonna be a two-step uh, technique because you do the dash and then you do the back of afterwards, so. Next up, we have uh, Zan Region, which I might have said correctly. I don't think I did, but uh, continue to launch two gigantic energy blades that ignore terrain. 100% and 1% attack damage on me from this pack. So you can do this twice, and the way they had this in the trailer is that you can actually control the directions that you um, use it in. So like you can launch one to the left and the other one to the right, which is pretty interesting there. Uh, I'm not really sure why you would want to do that. I guess if the opposition teleports to the like to one of the sides of you, or like maybe you're doing PVE and you want to do that to this kind of like uh, nuke, screen nuke. First, we have power oriented. The damage range, the damage rate increased by 25%. The flight range is reduced by 50%. So we have speed oriented. The range is increased by 25%. The flight speed is increased by 50%, which is very, very nice there. And then we have restriction off, which again, you can use repeatedly. And this is what you're going to be doing, um, using like all the time because you know, it just lets you skill spam. Um, actually surprising that they didn't give this to to just put this in one of his um in one of his uh passives like to do for some other characters first up we have armor protection armor reduce uh reduce damage taken by 15 percent when using uh zen legion gain two layers of defense enhancement status reducing damage taken by 7.5 percent so roughly eight percent stacks up to four stacks so you inherently have 15 percent and then each time you use um your skill two uh, you get an enhanced defense status, which just makes you bulkier and, you know, able to take a lot more hits, which is quite nice. Um, next up, we have Z Field. If you're going to show Baku and hits a target, you create a Z Field that continuously deals damage to the target within range. When Baku hits a target, you gain a stackable damage enhancement status, which increases the damage dealt by 10% stacks to three stacks. And here you can kind of see uh where where a lot of his offensive prowess come his offensive and defense prowess come from uh because you have stackable attack buffs you have stackable defense buffs and you have your inherent protection as well which is quite nice next up melee mastery increased damage by 20 percent when a melee weapon when equipping a melee weapon and then increased damage by 20 percent when a target um when a target that has been slowed so you have a potential 40 percent damage increase on top of <laughs> on top of your damage increase from this right here, if you're hitting a target that is slowed. 
So a lot of damage can be dealt, um, you know, just by kind of existing and making use of uh, Diversion Diver Number Zero's kit. Next up, we have Status Seal. Whenever uh, an energy blade of Zanijin hits a target, it will randomly take off one buff and cause the target to slow down and become disabled because you gotta make sure that you you really lean into your slow effect when using um, Diver Number Zero here. This effect is shared with um, Ryogo Shoku. Uh, when using Ryogo Shoku's dash and Baku, when gain defense and status that reduces the damage taken by 7.5% and it's stacked about the 4 stacks. This effect is there with, with armor protection. So basically, this just allows you to get um, get the defense stats regardless of which skill you're using. Uh, and it's shared, so that so you know that doesn't mean you get this up to 8 stacks, right? It's just shared. So if you get you get 2 stacks from this, then 2 stacks from this. So there's your 4 stacks right there. And then we have Auto Repair. Uh, when your HP drops below 50%, recover 10% HP. This effect can only be triggered once more after a 6 second cooldown. So status calls on Rigor Shoku and uh, Zanijin cannot be removed and ignored for an shield. Making sure that Dive Armor Zero will be doing his enhanced damage for hitting, you know, a target that has been slowed. Because it's, like, it can't be removed. Nor to your shield, so you can't, um, you can't be immune to it either. And then the auto repair. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, just the naming here, I think, is what's interesting about this passive. Uh, just because we have auto repair, we have had auto repair in the past as part of uh, random DNA, but it worked differently. Uh, this is good for Diver Zero. This is good for PVE. Um, really, you know, really good for PVE. Um, can be helpful in PvP, um, but I don't see the, the HP recovery as all of that helpful. Uh, to be quite honest, though, with the amount of damage mitigation you have. Um, it will, like, it probably is pretty relevant, realistically, uh, overall. Um, especially because of, like, like I said, the, the damage mitigation you have inherently and, like, the, the stacks you get. Following that, uh, let's take a look at Diver Reserve's DNA. He will not have DNA when he's releasing global. Well, he shouldn't have DNA anyway. Um, because he's got this semi-recently in the Taiwan version. But, as per usual, I like to go over the DNA so people are aware of what's going to be happening when the character gets their DNA in the global version of the game. So, first up, we have energy feedback. When defeating a target with a weapon or skill, whatever HP equal to 22.5% of the attack, uh, kill them use once more after it's just a like cooldown. Uh, this is this is very, very good for PvE. Um, it's not, I don't think it's that great for PvP. However, on a unit like Dive Armor Zero, it might make a good bit of a difference because you heal a decent amount. Dive Armor Zero is already hard enough to deal with as it is. So just adding a little bit more to him um, is, um, uh, I think it will help, uh, but I don't think it's the biggest deal for him in PV, uh, PvP. Uh, really good for PvP, uh, PvE, though. Uh, gives you a lot more survivability. Uh, really good for, you know, like, Jacobs. Or, like, if you're just underpowered doing story. Next up, we have Enhanced Melee Mastery. The damage enhancement effect uh, when equipped with a melee weapon and uh, melee mastery is increased to 24%. Uh, which is pretty interesting there. Um, I like how they say they they word it differently here and i wish they would go back and retroactively change that for the other passives so that it wouldn't confuse people um because usually they say they'll, they'll say it'll increase it by 20 percent bringing it which would bring it up to 24 percent if it's a 20 percent boost um but uh you know i just this, this is fine here more damage more good and then we have you told you when you equip two melee weapons at the same time increase damage deal by 30 percent so, even more damage here. Really, really good for a Diver Zero. Not too much for his opposition. Um, this is this will be really, really good for like things like raid. Um, and things like that just just you know just further increasing his battle prowess, which is very, very nice. And then for his random DNA here, we have reduced attack response. When in reduced attack status, reduced damage you take by twelve percent. Uh, typically, like I said, I typically don't like this passive all that much. Uh, to be quite honest. Uh, it might have some niche uses, though, in some very specific matchup. But uh, overall, I don't really like this, uh, this passive all that much. Uh, other than that, you have short range adaptability, short range boost, some sentinel, player killer, player killer is a big one, uh, melee amp, melee adaptability, again, two big ones here, which are very, very good there. Um, and for the for the defensive one, let's see, no skill resistance, okay, that's not bad. Uh, soul special attack, soul special attack is very, very good on uh, Dive Armor Zero. Shield special attack, damage enhances special attack, and eh, it's not really all that good, all that, to be honest. 
Um, but yeah, that's it for Dive Armor Zero's kit. So let's take a look at some weapons that'll work well with him. All right, so Dive Armor Zero, real good unit, likes melee weapons. Uh, doesn't necessarily want double melee all that much until his DNA drops. So uh, you will want at least one melee weapon on him. Uh, so due to that kind of, I guess, as per usual, uh, Buster Melee Hybrid, uh, it's so good. It's just so easy to slot on like any character just because of how versatile it is. So, Air Buster, Thermizer doesn't have a speed boost in his kit. Um, you can just use this to engage or disengage. Uh, speed boost is fantastic with the Air Buster here. And it has a little bit of defense on this as well, if you want to make use of that. And then some other passives over here as well. You get Homopathy Adaptability, uh, Rapid Reload, or the Defense Amp right there. Other than that, uh, we have the Cyber Busters. Um, Social Bolt, best Cyber Buster. Um, as per usual, uh, I always recommend the player killer passive or hidden skill with this just because player killer is just so much easier to get value out of as opposed to uh, penetration. Penetration has potential to deal a lot more damage, uh, but penetration requires, um, you know, a little bit more setup and finesse to make sure you can make use of the penetration from the ricocheting shots off of the spray calibration system. Uh, we have Hawk Precision Buster. Again, I don't like this buster. Uh, I like the way it looks, but I don't like the I don't like using this in practice uh, because you have to use your you have to be in gear quick up status to be able to pierce terrain. But in order to get that, you have to hit with this weapon initially first anyway. And I'd rather just have this weapon pierce terrain. Though I think it'd be a little too good if it just pierced terrain off the bat. Uh, but when you hit a target in mid or long range, uh, you get access to your quick up status, and then this allows you to ignore terrain with that. We also have the sniper buster. Sniper buster is. Um, Pretty, pretty decent buster to use as well. It's also free, so um, once you get up to research level eight, you can just start making the memories for this daily. So, uh, you know, that, that's a free sniper buster there, a sniper style buster. And then following that, we have the destructive laser. Very, very good as well. Um, this is a limited weapon though. So this is probably be the hardest one to, oh, well, this and Hawk Precision Buster are limited. So they'll probably be the two hardest ones to get in terms of Cyber Buster, but um, you can make use of this as well. Heading on over to the melee weapons. Uh, Nightmare is an option. You don't necessarily need Nightmare just because Dive Armor Zero already has inherent attack boost on him. But if you know what, if you want to deal more damage, I guess, sure, bring uh, bring Nightmare. Um, you just swing this around and get your attack boost. Um, you know, damage is damage, uh, getting your, your stacks pretty early could lead to uh, quicker KOs in, uh, in PvP. Ancient Relic. Ancient Relic is always a good weapon to use as well for its utility. Uh, Ancient Relic does have access to uh, speed, which Zyber Armor Zero doesn't have inherently, like I mentioned before. So it has access to a shield, which Zyber Armor Zero doesn't have, but I don't think he really needs a shield all that much. But hey, you know, less damage taken, less damage taken. So there is that. Um, and then he has two other skills, as well, cleanse and um, crit damage up as well. Gotta mention Grudge Axe. Grudge Axe is still one of the best melee weapons, if not the best melee weapon. Top three for sure, top five. Uh, reason for that is uh, Spirit Damnation, chance to steal a target's buff, and then Merchant Curse double the chance of that happening. So uh, when making contact with the target, you have a 60% chance to steal a buff from them. So it's a lot better than just, just dispelling the buff, just because you can take their buffs, which is quite nice. Um, the thing though is with Diver Armor Zero is if you're in a mirror match, you just have to kind of, I guess, be kind of wary of that happening to you because your buffs can be taken away from you. Or it doesn't necessarily have to be a mirror match. Just anyone with Grudge Axe um, can take your buffs away from you. But you do have a, a little bit of inherent bulk as it is. Uh, so you might be okay overall. And just Diver Armor Zero doesn't really even need to get in there and start brawling, right? He could just zone because he's just that good. Uh, there's also Spirit Possession. Inflicts targets with out of control. Uh, can throw some people off. Um, but uh, yeah, there's that. You don't have Grudge Axe Singularity Slasher as an option as well. I think Singularity Slasher is still pretty decent. Overall, Singularity Slasher, uh, unlike Grudge Axe uh, stealing the buffs, Singularity Slasher dispels the buffs. But this is, the dispel chance is 100%. However, with how consistently or how how dash slashing works, uh, sixty percent one is already in your favor, and two, uh, with how you know how many times you get with dash slashing, the odds you know you'll have a lot higher chance of triggering that. Um, single slash it can remove two buffs at one time, um, so there is there's a, a boon there for that. 
while I'm back here talking about limited weapons anyway, let's talk about Decides Will. Decides Will is just a fantastic weapon. Uh, not only that, uh, Decides Will is a launcher, which is pretty interesting because if I remember correctly, there are some cards that have access to allowing you to be boosted with having a launcher and a melee weapon, which is very, very good because Ever Missouri wants to have melee weapons as it is uh, for the additional damage. So, um, having this to zone out alongside your melee weapon, if you want to brawl it up as well, it's quite nice. The sides will just a fantastic weapon. A lot of people don't like it, but uh, you can't deny that it's good. Fishes terrain, um, and it will auto aim even if auto aim is disabled or if you're in confusion. So, the sides will just like basically like a cheat code. And also use turbo cannon if you want. Turbo cannon's uh is always a solid option to just put on a character if you don't really know what else to put on. Never Missouri already has inherent iframes though. But having more iframes is never a bad thing. Uh, just be aware that for this weapon in particular, you want the overheat protection as your hidden skill if you're going to be using it for the iframes, which I think is the only one worth using, to be quite honest. Uh, but if you are going to do that, you need to be aware of not unlocking the commercial energy tank like I have here. The reason for that is because while this does sound good in practice, or in theory rather, increases range, which, you know, that sounds good, increase energy by 10%. Again, that sounds good, but increasing energy by 10% also means that it's going to take you a bit longer to get to overheat protection because you have to empty out your entire clip before you have access to that. All right, let's take a look at some cards. I'm gonna pair well with Dive Armor Zero. Um, again, it's gonna depend on what you have in your DNA. Well, maybe not so much your DNA because he won't have his full access to his DNA when he's releasing Global, or again, or at least he shouldn't. To my knowledge, he should not have his DNA, but um, it's gonna depend on the weapon to use as well. And realistically, with Dive Armor Zero, you can basically get away with using just about anything just because of the nature of Dive Armor, Dive Armor Zero. However, uh, I do think you want to make use of some combination of some of the following here. As per usual, if you're playing PvP, Player Killer is always a fantastic option to have on a more offensive unit. And speaking of that, first up, we have the Akuma card here. This is a limited card, so if you don't have it, I, that sucks. <laughs> Uh, the Master of the Fist card here, when he targets a player, increase damage deal by 4%. Attack by a player, reduce damage you take by 4%. Very, very nice. attack with both uh, both Player Killer and Player Sentinel, inherently, because that's a different name. So that's great there. Following that, we have the M. Bison card. This has Player Killer again, though. It is a limited card, so you have to kind of be aware of that. That's Player Killer 2 on that. Um, for non-limited cards, we have some little bit of a budget option here. I say a little bit of a budget, uh, but you get these from the token stop, token shop here. <clears throat> the Life Aura card uh, has Player Killer 2, and the Sigma X4 card has Player Killer 2 as well. Uh, worth noting that the Life Aura card can be stacked with itself for Player Killer uh, 2 and 3, gives you 14% extra Player Killer. And then, um, if you want to use Life Aura alongside the... Um, what was it? What was it, Red Card? That's alongside the Akuma or the M. Bison card. No, not Akuma, uh, M. Bison, you can do that as well. There are a few other options for Player Killer as well, if you're a bit more on a budget, uh, if RNG is a bit in your favor for these. Um, for the Mac card right here, uh, you get this from, from card packs, uh, but it, it is an A rank card, so it's a bit easier to get. Player Killer 2 on this, uh, Player Killer 1 at base, which is with a red blue. Because she isn't bad at all. And then we also have the Wheel Gator card, which you can make in the research lab. And this is something else that you could stack with itself because it's green, green, yellow. You can also check your uh, Mac with itself uh, because uh, you could just stack two Macs. But I think you could just stack something better alongside it, though. Uh, aside from that, if you're going Buster Melee, Elite Hunter is always a fantastic option here because of the Buster Melee setup, you get an additional 18% extra damage and uh, damage mitigation just because of these two cards right here. So you have 8%, you have 10%, very, very good to have there. Then you can pair this with a red card if you want. And speaking of red cards, we have a few decent ones here. The Exit Memories card, which you can get from the Deep Quarter, so make sure you're doing that weekly to get access to this. Uh, and then there's also the God, I forgot the name of the card. Uh, I just talked about it last time I did a character overview as well. Twin Heroes, I think is the name. Um, it has melee, that melee adaptability and melee amplification on it. It's a red card trick because it's a red-blue, which is very, very good. 
downside with that one is that you would have had to either bought it or you would have had to uh, have gotten it last month from the the monthly rewards. I almost have battle pass. It's kind of the same as a battle pass. I also forgot to mention, but the Elite Hunters card, you get this from, from your guild. So um, hopefully orange is in your favor for that. As you can see, I have a lot here because I just kind of keep getting them from my guild. Now, if you don't have access to those, there are a few other cards you can use in place of that for Bust of Melee, but although they won't be nearly as good. The Well, also, first I want to also mention the X and Zero card for Bust of Death Ability. I think this was a... I think this might have been a monthly reward as well, but she goes off for Red Blue. Uh, but uh, if RNG isn't really in your favor, I think it's the Guild Development card. Yeah, Guild Development has Buster Melee. Um, you can stack this with itself. Buster Melee 1, Buster Melee 2. And successfully completed as well has Double Amp for Buster Melee. And this is, again, something you can stack with itself. It has a blue green. You just get two of these together. And then you have 10% amplification right there. So that's quite nice. All right, if you wanted to go a bit more defensive for some reason on your Dive Armor Zero, uh, you can stack some Player Sentinel, and a good card to stack with Player Sentinel is the Spy Double card. Uh, this also gives you Out of Control Special Attack, which you can make make good use of if you're using Grudge Axe. So Spy Double is a limited card from the Halloween event, so hopefully you have that if you want to go to a bit more defense to go Player Sentinel uh, 3 here, and then Player Sentinel 2 here. That's 14% extra damage mitigation. That's also 14% damage amp as well. Uh, so there's something you can do right there and then on top of that there is a red card here so you could actually even go ahead and put the put bases life or a card in place of one of them if you want uh you will still need a red card to trigger that though uh but this is something you can do all right i did want to cut back in here this isn't about a card specifically for double zero but um i said something earlier where you might want to use melee and um melee launcher but i think when I said that, I was specifically thinking of the passive that uh, ZX Ale has, which gives you a boost for using Melee Launcher. So uh, I don't know if that's actually a combination for other cards. I just know that ZX Ale has that, and I think that's what I was thinking of when I was thinking about that um, as a possibility. There might be cards with that, but I don't know of any off the top of my head, so I apologize about that. I just wanted to say that before uh, we move on. All right, I think that will wrap up Dive Armor Zero for now. Uh, it's a pretty good unit. Uh, and by pretty good, I mean very, very good unit. I never looked at the splash screen on Dive Armor Zero, so let's take a look at that. Very, very cool looking um, screen there. So, should you pull for Dive Armor Zero? Um, yes, probably. Uh, I think just about everyone should pull for Dive Armor Zero. Especially if you care about PvP. If you don't care that much about PvP, then you don't necessarily need him all that much. Uh, but he is such a force to be working with in PvP. Uh, you're basically going to be at a disadvantage if you don't have Dive Armor Zero. If you're going to be planning to play PvP once he releases. So, uh, that is something to keep in mind. He is very good in PvE as well. But PvE also isn't very difficult at all. Uh, though he will, he is good at other game modes, such as he'll be good for the total about power battle game modes, uh, and he's also good for raid bosses as well, just because he has high burst damage, he has buffs, and once he gets his DNA, um, running him a double melee would be fantastic, alongside you know just his inherent buffs, his healing, his durability, and things like that. So yeah, overall, I think he's a very good unit to pull for, uh, but he's not going to be for everyone's account. Right, because not everyone's gonna care about PvP. Uh, like I said, PvE is pretty pretty easy. Uh, but he is good for raids. So if you care about raids, uh, you care about PvP, uh, you definitely pull for him. But you'll be okay with Adam if you don't care necessarily about either one of those. So uh, that's gonna be it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Most channels go share enjoy the content. And really like to give a shout out to my YouTube members and my channel patrons. Thank you for supporting me and continue to allow me to do what I do. If you like to support me as a patron or as a channel member, you can find the information down below in the description. And I'll catch you guys next time. Later.